In this example of using Newton's laws to analyze forces, we'll look at the forces two boxes exert on each other. In this example, we have two boxes, box one and box two, sitting on a frictionless surface. I'm going to give box one a push with a push of 20 newtons. Now, if I set something on a slippery surface and then gave it a push, I would expect that it would accelerate in the direction of my push. And so I'm going to guess that the acceleration is in this direction, the same direction as my push. What I'd really like to find out is the force that these two boxes exert on each other. However, finding the acceleration of both boxes together will be a step in the right direction because what I would expect if I push this box is that I would expect both boxes to accelerate smoothly. I wouldn't expect box two to get away. So if box two had an acceleration greater than the acceleration I find for the two system, uh, two box system, then I would expect that box two would eventually start to pull away from box one and I would get something like this later on. Where I'm pushing on one box and this other box, this box two, just keeps getting further and further away. Now that's not something we usually see. Similarly, if instead box one had an acceleration that was larger than the two box acceleration, what I'd get is box one smooshing into box two. And while yes, that does happen, remember, we are on a frictionless surface. And so as I push on box one, there's nothing to prevent box two from moving ahead with it. So I'd expect that the distance between these two boxes, instead of smooshing each other or getting away from each other, I would expect that they would stay exactly the same distance apart. So as one accelerates, the other will accelerate. What that means is that the acceleration of box one is going to be equal to the acceleration of box two, which is going to be equal to the acceleration of my two box system. So I'll begin by finding the acceleration of my two box system. I'm defining my system to be around both boxes. As I look at the forces on these boxes, there is of course the force of my push. There are however, two other forces at least. There's the force of gravity, which the force of gravity is defined to be the mass of my system times the acceleration due to gravity. In this case, my system has two masses, the mass of box one and the mass of box two. The mass of box one is five kilograms and the mass of box two is 15 kilograms. So the total mass of my system is 20 kilograms. Apart from the force of gravity, I also know that there's going to be some support force that prevents these two boxes from sliding through the floor. This is often what we would call the normal force. Thinking about it a bit more, I don't see any other forces. Remember, this is a frictionless surface, and so we wouldn't expect there to be any sort of friction force on these two boxes. Having determined all of my forces, I can now draw my free body diagram. When I push on these boxes, I don't expect them to suddenly accelerate up into the air. And so that tells me that my surface force pointing upwards has to exactly cancel out my force of gravity pointing downward. This leaves the only force on my system, the net force on my system being the force of the push. And as I can see from my free body diagram, this would generate an acceleration to the right, which is what I predicted.
Having determined all the forces, I can now begin to write down a statement of Newton's second law. Newton's second law, of course, says the net force, net external force on my system is equal to the mass of my system times the acceleration of my system. This being a vector equation, I'd like to turn it into a scalar equation. And to do that, I'm going to need to define a positive direction. So I will define the right to be positive. I can write out my net force, which is the force of my push. Then the mass of my system times the acceleration of my system is going to be mass one plus mass two times my acceleration A. Or in other words, this is going to be, putting it together, this is going to be 20 newtons equals five kilograms plus 15 kilograms times my acceleration, which tells me my acceleration is equal to one meter per second squared. You'll notice I get a positive acceleration, which is good because I said my acceleration was pointing to the right and I chose to the right as my positive direction. Knowing the acceleration of the whole system, I now know the acceleration of each box individually and that will let me begin to, dis to work towards finding out what the force of each box is on the other box. To find the forces between the two boxes, I'm now going to define a new system. I'm going to define a system that only includes box two. Of course, I would still expect box two to accelerate to the right, as we said before, and my acceleration is going to be the same as the acceleration I found for the two box system. I can write down my forces. There's the force of gravity, which has changed. Now, the force of gravity is the mass of my system, mass two, times the acceleration due to gravity. There is, of course, still this normal force that opposes gravity and helps support and keep my box from sliding through the floor. One force that is not present in, and acting on my box two system is this pushing force. It's acting only on box one. It doesn't act on box two, so I can't include it in my free body diagram. Instead, I have to look at the force of box one on box two. Box one is pushing on box two and exerting a force on it. And now when I draw my free body diagram, I see something like this. Once again, we'll find we don't expect acceleration to suddenly occur in the vertical direction. I don't expect box two to pop up into the air. So my acceleration should be only in this horizontal direction and my surface force and my gravitational force should cancel each other out. Just as before, I will choose to the right as the positive direction so that I can begin to translate Newton's second law, which is a vector equation into a scalar equation. Beginning with the net force, the net force on this system is just F12. That is, of course, equal to the mass of my system times the acceleration of my system, which in this case is just mass 2 times my acceleration. Putting it together, this gives me that force 1, 2 is equal to mass 2, which is 15 kilograms times one meter per second squared, or in other words, the force of box one on box two is 15 newtons of force. One thing you'll notice is that the force of box one on box two is a positive 15 newtons. 
which is good. That checks out. We said that to the right was positive, and we would expect that box 1 pushes box 2 to the right. So we've worked out what the force of box 1 on box 2 is. All that's left to figure out is what is the force of box 2 pushing back on box 1. So we'll begin as we did before. I'm going to define my system this time only around box 1. My acceleration I expect to be to the right just as before and exactly equal to 1 meter per second squared as before. I again I'm going to have a force of gravity but my force of gravity has changed between the other two systems. This time the mass of my system is just mass 1. There is of course a surface force and since I don't expect my box to accelerate upwards, I would again expect that the force of gravity and the surface force exactly cancel out. This time I'm going to include a force of box 2 pushing backwards on my box 1. And I will get a free body diagram that looks a little different than the other two free body diagrams. This time I have to include the force of my push, but I'm also going to include the box 2 pushing backwards. However, I do still want that when I add up all my forces, I get a net acceleration to the right. To start writing down an equation, I'm going to pick a direction. So to the right is my positive direction once again. And now I can write out the net force on my system. I expect the surface force and the gravitational force to cancel out, so I'm not going to include them. My net force is going to be the force of my push, which is in the positive direction, so that's a positive force. And then instead of writing a minus F21, I'm just going to leave it as a vector. And we'll see in a moment that the sign will come out of our answer. This is going to be equal to the mass of my system times the acceleration of my system, which is just M1 times the acceleration. Putting this together, I get 20 newtons plus F21, the force of box two on box one, is equal to five kilograms times one meter per second squared. When I solve this out, I get that the force of box 2 on box 1 is equal to minus 15 newtons. Notice that it is negative. We would expect that since, again, our force was pushing in the negative direction. One other thing you'll notice is that this is minus 15 newtons. That is exactly equal to and opposite from the force of box one on box two. So working through this example, not only did we find out what the forces were between these two boxes, we've confirmed Newton's third law, that the force of one body on another body is exactly equal to and opposite of the force of the other body on the one. In this example, we saw that by carefully defining our system and employing Newton's laws, we could address more varied and nuanced situations than with just the, using the kinematic equations. So we're broadening our toolbox and broadening the amount and the number uh, and kind of questions we can address.